Is it the shareholders are demanding that they produce less because they want the higher oil price, they want the buybacks, for example, or is it uh, an issue with the upstream? Um, you can't get the oil out, it's too expensive. Do you have an idea yet? Well, I mean, look, yeah, we, I, we don't have the specifics yet. We're waiting for the call. But, you know, what I will say is the Permian is growing in line with expectations. U.S. volumes are down and international volumes are down. And it doesn't seem to be Kazakhstan. It's a little bit tricky because, you know, everything's clumped into, into big groups. And it's hard to, to parse exactly where the volume weakness is coming from. Uh, the other aspect here, as I mentioned, is that Chevron is upstream weighted. So what you've seen yesterday was really superb results from Valero. Uh, which bodes very well for Exxon. In fact, people were expecting a lot from Valero because of the Exxon guidance. And finally, Chevron doesn't guide anymore, whereas Exxon does. So this you know, comes a bit of a negative surprise when they come out with, with their earnings because we really haven't had any guidance about what's going to happen. Hmm. Paul, why the other do thing I, I add, which is just, just to Sorry, add, which is on. very important, just to add, which is very important, there's a real suspicion in my mind at least, that they announced this massive $75 billion buyback as a smokescreen for the results. Because mm -hmm. if you listen to the company's guidance, the 5 to $15 billion a year buyback, which they had previously guided to, is unchanged. They're at the top end of a $15 billion per annum buyback. But essentially what they've done here is told you about their next five years of buyback, which I frankly think was politically a mistake because you're bringing attention to a five-year program with board approval that you really didn't need to. I mean, I think they're just attracting, you know, windfall profit tax cries where there's actually no ups, upgrade to their uh, buyback guidance in terms of the outlook for next year. So is this as good as it gets, do you think, Paul, for Chevron? I, the, the, the stock's had an incredible run. Is this as good as it gets? No, not really, because, uh, you know, we're bullish oil, but everybody else is too. But, mm. but obviously, at the moment, we think that the, the group is discounting about $80 oil, which is, you know, not far off where we are, essentially. Although, of course, as you know, we're now beginning to head towards $90 Brent. And we've been calling for $120 Brent by uh, driving season, which is mm. pretty aggressive. And it, uh, having said that, everybody's more or less bullish going into driving season here. Uh, we're waiting for the Russian uh, product export ban to kick in next week, which could tighten things up. Mm -hmm. So I think from an oil price point of view, the question is, do these stocks start discounting a higher long-term oil price if we start, for example, moving towards a sustained $100 barrel environment? Well, and, you know, that's, that, that's a big question about the economy and everything else in terms of the demand side. But the mm -hmm. supply side, as you can see from Chevron's results, is extremely challenged and yeah. if demand remains as high as we think it will with 8 billion people in the world we could well be moving into an era of $100 oil and all of these stocks need to go up probably another 20% at least.